girl. Okay, I think that's good. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And my name is Pat. And, and what are we filming today? We are filming a 2024 LX Seltos. And you wanna know something interesting about this car? What's interesting about this car? Not just the features, Okay. not just the price, but it has a 52% residual after five years if you wanted to lease that car. That's a strong residual. So that means <laughs> that in five years, it's worth more than half of what you paid for it. That's crazy. Um, Anyways. Which brings us to our topic. Not only do we review cars, every or Kia and Hyundai vehicles, every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's also a secret to this channel. And that secret is we have three dealerships. Right. Brantford Kia, where we film every day. Brantford Hyundai, yeah. which is about 10 minutes down the road. And Owen Sound Hyundai. So any of these stores would be happy to assist you in your car buying journey. And if you do so happen to want a Kia or a Kia Seltos, you get a 55% residual. What? 52. <laughs> Only at Brantford Kia, 52, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so as always, we'll do a full interior and exterior walkthrough of this vehicle and answer your live questions at the very end. We film these videos live every weekday for three reasons on top of the three reasons, or the three dealerships. So what are those reasons, Pat? Uh, the number one reason is you may already own a Kia or a Hyundai, and we just wanna show you whatever you wanna learn about the car. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll go through any feature that uh, you might request. Yep. Number two. Number two is if you are considering a new vehicle, we want you to add Kia or Hyundai to your selection list, maybe even both. We think these vehicles offer great value, and that's why we love to talk about them. Talk about them so much. And lastly, we are a real dealership. Three real we, dealerships. We legitimately work here every day. Yes. And so if you're in Ontario and you're thinking, hey, I'd love to buy a Kia or hey, I'd love to buy a Hyundai, buy it from us. Buy it from us. <laughs> so as always, I'll link our dealership to websites in the description of this video once it's posted and you can contact our sales teams and they'll help you out. Okay, so let's show people who are not watching us live how they can join us live. Okay, so if you missed it at the beginning, I mentioned that every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live on this YouTube channel. First step is you definitely wanna find our channel and hit subscribe. We're almost at 100,000 subs right over there, so it would make us really, really happy. And then next step is under the Home tab or the Live tab, you'll see we have a video that's listed as upcoming. From there, all you have to do is click on the video. It'll load you in like a regular YouTube video would, but there's a twist. On the right side, you may have an ad, so we're just gonna, you know, swing past that. And you'll see we have a top chat or live chat box. That's where you guys will go to say hello. You'll, <laughs> you'll say, what, hi all, no doctors today, yeah. You'll let us know what's going on in your life and we'll let you know what's going on in ours. It's a fun time. So not only do we do these videos for work, we do it to have a good time. All right, let's get into yeah, the car. We love <laughs> our viewers and we love answering their questions. And so that's one of the reasons to join us live is we get to interact and hopefully answer any questions you oh, might have. Doing the videos live are way more fun, especially if you guys are live with us. It's, it's a ball. Okay, taking a look at the vehicle, this is the LX all wheel drive trim level. So there is one below and you guessed it, it's front wheel drive. However, they share all the same features except for that locking differential and the all wheel drive system. Looking at the front end, we get some halogen headlights as well as some fog lights, halogen, halogen. I always get made fun of for that, but it's the way I speak. Um, and then also in the front end, we have a dark black grill with some beautiful chrome pieces. I am still recovering some from sickness, so if I sound a little gross, that's why. All right, now under the hood, we have a two liter four cylinder gasoline engine in the Kia Seltos. This goes up to all the trims, except for the SX Turbo, where you guessed it, we have a turbocharged engine. This output is 147 horsepower with 132 pound feet of torque. Let's prop this up so my arms aren't tired anymore. Now tied to that, you do have an IVT transmission. An IVT is not your conventional CVT, continuously variable transmission. It is much smoother, very, very fuel efficient, and I think it works perfectly with the Kia Seltos. We also have it in a couple of our other cars, and it's just a flawless transmission. Moving on to the wheels, these are 17 inch alloy wheels in a dark gray finish. Beautiful updated Kia logo center caps. I think these wheels are stunning. They're also shared with the uh, EX trim. Now coming off to the side, we have roof rails. So standard on the Kia Seltos, you do have these functional roof rails. Fuel door, which is regular unleaded fuel. And then the big thing, the trunk. There is a ton of cargo space in the Kia Seltos. Whether you have the seats up or folded down, there's seriously a lot of space, both width-wise and height-wise, to put all your belongings. 
Um, and fun fact, I was camping the other week, I saw a Seltos with two kayaks on the top. So you can really do a lot with this vehicle, whatever your heart desires, whatever fits on the roof of the car. Uh, I will fold down one of our rear seats just so you can see what the room is like with them folded down. So you have these latches up at the top, you give them a pull. And as long as the front seats aren't too far back, they usually fold down all the way. Give me a second. All right, now all the way down, you can see we have a very, very slight angle. Not much though. So utilizing all this space, you could sleep in this car if you wanted to, do some car camping. Underneath the floorboard here, we do have an actual compact spare tire with a bunch of space along the side. Another cool thing you can do with this uh, rear cargo tray area is slide it out from the rails and drop it down. And that's gonna give you an extra three inches of cargo space if you need to do so. All right, let's close this up. Take a look at the rear end. We have a beautiful rear tail light that extends all across the vehicle. This is new for 2024. There has been a slight change from 2023. I think it makes this vehicle look much more modern. You also have an LED third mounted brake light right up here. And another cool thing they've changed about the Kia Seltos for 2024 is they've added a ton of safety features standard. So I'm gonna walk you through them, starting off with the rear, cause we're back here. You get rear cross traffic alert. And I know Pat's showing you the back end, but you can't see it. You can't it. see anything. You can't see anything. So what does it do? Essentially, if you have your vehicle in reverse, let's say you're in a parking lot about to get out and a car approaches from either the left or right side. Inside the vehicle, you're gonna get a beep to let you know something's coming. And then if you keep reversing and it senses the risk of a collision, it'll actually break for you. So Which avoiding- Which is absolutely frightening when it comes on. It's terrifying. Because it um, slams on the brake and it absolutely stops you from hitting anything. Which is good. But it is scary. It's definitely scary. Uh, we have tried this feature. I know we talk about them all the time, which leads us to think, okay, does it work? And yes, it does. I tried it with a vehicle and then with my manager and no one got hit, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then for my last touch point or talking point on the safety features that are standard on the Kia Seltos, again, I'm going to stand at the front, even though you can't see anything because everything is all in the vehicle. We have forward collision avoidance. So let's say I'm driving on the highway, the car ahead of me, slams on the brakes and I don't react right away. This vehicle will give me a warning inside the cabin to let me know that there is a risk of a forward collision. And if I don't react to it, the vehicle will break for me. On top of that, in our windshield, this one we can actually see a little bit. There's the camera right over there. I can't reach, but it's over there, trust me. And that monitors the lanes ahead of you. So as I'm driving and the vehicle sees the lanes, it's gonna let me know if I'm starting to depart. So either on the left or right side, it'll beep at me and correct me if I choose to have that feature on. If I have it off, it won't bug you at all. I know a lot of our customers may or may not like that feature. But on top of that, it sees upcoming changes in the road. Like let's say a curve upcoming, even on the highway, it'll take corrective action and steer for me. So not only is it gonna, it won't ping pong you in your lane, but it will steer for you, assist you. Right, Pat? Right, it's uh, <laughs> definitely my favorite feature. All right, let's hop in. Have you ever yeah. done a road, like when you did a road trip, did you have it on? Oh yeah. I'm going to take the camera for me real quick just okay. to show my seat. So yes, I just did a road trip. It was in a Sorento PHEV, so a very different vehicle. However, they share a lot of the same safety features and having this steering assistance on is a life changer, especially if you're doing a lot of long, long, tiresome driving country roads. Okay. So the driver and passenger seat are both manual. You do have a height adjustment right over here. And then of course your backrest, so you can have it on an angle or a bit more straight. And then to actually adjust how close your vehicle is, to your vehicle, your seat is to the steering wheel, you have the bar underneath the seat. All right, moving on in, I'll show you the driver's side door. I really, really love how, even though this is technically an entry level trim, they didn't go boring with the styling. So you have this three dimensional shape, <laughs> almost like, I don't even know what to say, but it looks very, very good on your speakers door handles, nice and seamless design. And then we have our door controls right over here. So we have unlock and lock, our mirror controls. So they are powered, of course, and they are electric. Oh my gosh, heated. Sorry, words are hard today. We have an express up and down window for your driver. And then of course, power windows for the rest of the vehicle's windows. I'll now give this to Pat and we'll go over everything else. So another thing you may be asking, what's new on the inside for the Kia Seltos? We already know there's a bunch more safety features standard. This guy right up here is brand new. So this is our 4.2 inch TFT 
cluster. That's a mouthful. But essentially what's different is we now have these digital panels on both sides. So for your speedometer and your tachometer, it's all digitized. Um, you can't change really how it looks except for the color. So you can choose between purple, blue, or red. Uh, however, it is a very nice screen to look at, still very informative. You don't have to cycle through any screens to see your vehicle's information. Now this center panel here is what you can actually play with and see different displays. So I'll show you how to do that. On the right side of your steering wheel, where you'll find all your driver assistance buttons, you just press this little notepad button and it'll cycle between your different menus. We have our lane safety, our drive info, which will show your fuel consumption, user assistance or user settings, where you can cycle between driver assistance. Oh, it wouldn't be a Kia Honda channel without that. Oh, <laughs> Kia Honda channel video without that. Got to reset our camera. Or... If you press the button twice, I think it fixes it. We're back. Woo, okay. We're back. Obviously, this is live. <laughs> yes, very much so. All right, so under this panel here, you can see we have our driver assistance. If I weren't, if I want to cycle through that, I can just select it. And then here, you can play around with the warning volume, the timelines, and then just turn off any features you may or may not like. Everything can be changed again, so you don't have to worry about messing anything up with your vehicle. You can always go back and change it. You can also play around with some convenient settings. If you want a welcome sound or to change your service interval, you'll all find that right here. All right. I'm going to take that again from me, Pat, just to show the left side. So on the left side of the steering wheel, we have our volume controls, our Bluetooth controls, and our media controls. So mode, if I press that, will cycle me between AM radio, FM radio, Bluetooth audio, whatever I have connected. Voice commands will either use Siri if your phone's connected to Apple CarPlay or your Google Assistant. Or if you don't have any phone connected, it'll just be your vehicle's regular voice commands. Volume controls here, and then a phone button and a favor button that you can set to do whatever you'd like. Moving on into the main panel here, we have our eight inch touchscreen display. And this vehicle has a feature that even our most expensive, most fully loaded, whatever vehicle, let's say the Kia EV9, for example, doesn't have. And that is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that means whatever phone I have, whether it be Apple or Android, I can project seamlessly from my phone to my vehicle's display without a cord. It works amazing. This is really great if you'd rather use your phone's Google Maps or Waze, whatever apps you like to use, as well as your Bluetooth uh, media. You can have Spotify. What do you like to listen to, Pat? Podcasts. Podcasts on Spotify or Apple Music? No, on Apple. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so whatever you like to listen to, it's all on your screen here. So if you're parked, you can cycle between all your playlists. You can go through your notes, not your notes, but your calendar, see what you have planned for the day. It is amazing and it looks just like your phone screen, so it's very user friendly. You may not ever see the Kia screen again because you'll always have your phone connected, which is very nice. We also have volume control knobs and our tune knob if you are listening to the regular radio. Just below we have our air vents and hazard lights and then our climate control. So AC temperature right over here, fan speed in the very center with some circulated air and then our fan direction. We also have a rear window defrost. Down here we have a shelf, which is perfect if you do have a phone plugged in. You can just prop it on over there. A 12 volt. Um, I did have one of our viewers comment on another video last week saying it's so nice to still have a 12 volt in the front. A lot of our vehicles are removing it and I totally agree. It is nice to have. USB in the very center for media. So whether you want to listen to music from an iPod or whatever it could be, you can plug it in there. And a USB-C because this is a 2024 right in the front. <laughs> Up here we also have our drive mode select so this dial can be twisted either to the left or right to cycle you between your three different drive modes. So you get normal, sport, and smart in the Kia Seltos. And see how it changes the color of your gauge cluster? I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> now not only does it change the color of your gauge cluster, it's going to change the way your vehicle is performing. So if I cycle it into sport mode, it's going to feel a bit more peppy but it will consume a little bit more fuel. However you like to drive the vehicle will adapt to that. Now, speaking of adapt, we do have smart mode. Smart mode is going to truly change to whatever you're doing. So if I'm taking it nice and easy on the city, but then I ask for more power when I'm getting onto the highway, it'll temporarily switch me into sport mode for as long as I'm driving dynamically or a bit more peppy. As I slow down again, it'll bring me right back to our normal mode and be more fuel efficient, which is truly a smart way to drive. Now, just below that, we have our heated seat button, three different levels for both the driver and the passenger. All wheel drive locking differential, and then our downhill braking assist. For your gear shift, it is a nice standard gear shift. I know a lot of our viewers prefer that. I prefer it too, I will not lie. <laughs> um, which you can switch over to left and drive to select your gears manually, if you'd like. <laughs> there we go. 
Now, on top of manual, we have a manual parking brake. Flip it on up, it's engaged, bring it down, it's down. Cool thing about this, you can do really fun drifts in the parking. Just kidding. It's so nice to actually have a manual parking brake because you can choose how much braking you want engaged, if that makes sense. When you have an electronic parking brake, it's either on or it's off. So, you nice to have. All right, in the very center, we have our center console. Nothing crazy in here, but depends what you put in there, I guess. All right, and then we'll go through our glove box. I'll have Pat open that up and check out the back. Yeah, I got all the high-tech stuff. Yeah, pretty cool. Here's a glove box. Woo! <laughs> and then one more thing before we hop in the back. I know all our viewers are probably asking about this. Does it have a sunglass holder? The answer is no, it does not. So unfortunately, no sunglass holder on this vehicle. However, this is what I would do. This little section here, if you don't have a phone in there while it's charging, perfect for a sunglass, and it is quite hidden, I would say. Also, probably won't get as hot as the actual sunglass holder, so your glasses won't be steaming when you put them on your face. Can you show the backup camera? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So that's your backup camera. You do have dynamic parking guidelines. So as I'm reversing and I go to move my steering wheel, those guidelines will move with me to show me exactly where I'm going to end up as I'm parking. All right, let's check out the back. <laughs> and look what we have here, a window sticker. So what is the average fuel efficiency, you may ask? 8.2 liters per 100 kilometers, highway and city combined. Pretty nice. And then cost is $27,195 Canadian for this vehicle. That's before taxes and fees, which is $2,000 more than the entry level front wheel drive. So $2,000 for all wheel drive. Is it worth it for you? I think it's pretty worth it. I think it's worth it. I think it's totally worth the it. The residual is higher also on an all wheel drive than it is on a front wheel drive. This is true. All right. Now, come on in. <laughs> Back here, we have, again, our cloth seats with this beautiful insert in the center. These seats are very, very comfortable themselves. I do like them. Like I mentioned earlier, they do fold down in a 60-40 split. So we got our 60 here and our 40 over there. No center console um, cup holder armrest on this vehicle, unfortunately. However, we do have car seat anchors on each seat. And that's about it for back here. <laughs> it's pretty spacious. We do have a lot of headroom and a lot of legroom, as you can see here. I seriously, that's a lot of room and I did not move my seat all the way um, forwards, believe it or not. Now, sitting behind someone as tall as Pat, that might be a little bit different. However, it's still very, very comfortable. So Pat, how tall are you? I'm about 6'2", and I wouldn't actually sit with it that far back. That was just for filming. Just for funsies and filming. So even with someone who's taller than 6'2", allegedly, <laughs> we have, what, two inches of knee room? Still a ton of headroom, and width-wise, I have a lot of seat around me, so I'm not going to be cramped to the passenger sitting beside me. That's about it for the back of the Saltos. I will also point out, I might just grab that again from you. Sure just to show that the styling does not end in the front. We still have this beautiful three-dimensional shape on your speakers, cup holders on the very bottom, your nice door handles, just a bunch of space. There is lights up there as well too. Headrest is adjustable for the center seat. However, it's fixed for the two main seats. And yeah, that's about it for the back of the Seltos. Take a nice good look at it again. This color is called Snow White Pearl. It's a beautiful, stunning pearl paint color. It definitely doesn't show up as a pearly color on film, but in the sunlight, it has a beautiful, beautiful sparkle. All right, let's answer some questions. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that might be too high up, actually. Let's get the car. There we go. All right. So. Let's see if we've got any guys if you have any questions please feel free to ask and remember uh, we have zero marketing budget for this channel so <laughs> if you want to give us a, a like if you want to share it if you want to subscribe all of that helps us grow our channel it helps the algorithms and we would appreciate it so um gabby needs to cut back on her smokes maybe start with only one pack a day oh my gosh we're adding that to our reading mean comments video <laughs> guys it's not that i'm just you don't smoke do you no okay i'm just dying <laughs> all right see a bunch of hellos in the beginning a couple get better gabby's thank you 
Okay, so we got a comment here about um, someone who has a Sportage X-Line Prestige, which is a US model. Mm -hmm. However, having experienced difficulties charging the car, so I'm assuming that's a PHEV? Yeah. I, I mean, we haven't I, seen anything. Yeah. So. Um, let's see. Could a video be made to demonstrate how to charge it properly? I pro may probably be doing it incorrectly. Yeah, can you do a video sometime on just how to plug in a PHEV? Or yeah, HV? just like best practices and charging. That that's not a bad idea. We could do something like that. I think for sure. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to say quickly though, as just like a quick diagno diagnostic, can you make sure that scheduled charging isn't on on your vehicle? Maybe if he goes to plug it in, it's not charging right away because scheduled charging. Yeah. So in in your menu, you can schedule when you want the power to start charging your car. And you do that like here after, I think it's after eight o'clock, the electricity rates drop. So if you wanted to plug it in and it not start charging until low, uh, the cheaper electricity, then that's something that you could do, so. This is unrelated, but Pat, so many comments on your suit. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I like clothes to be honest, so. Well, th that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like cool stuff, so. Pat, why can't smaller SUVs tow? They can, it's just they're not going to be rated for it because it could shorten the life of the vehicle. And so Kia, Hyundai, they're not going to put a tow rating, but let's face it, like a Rio could tow something. Yep. It's just, you know, if you're doing it all the time, it's going to shorten the life of the car. And so that's, that's why they just don't have a tow rating. So, but they can, yep. Um, there was someone that commented that you had yellow um, did oh. you have yellow? Uh, yes, last week I had bright school bus yellow nail polish. I did change that. Let me know if you like. <laughs> okay, so we've got a comment here about um, navigating through Android Auto. So pretty much all of us use Apple products here, but yes. I think one of our coworkers uses an Android, so maybe we could do... A new video on it? Yeah, yeah. we haven't done... Uh, that would be a good technology video. We could do that. It's always, um, whenever I have a customer pick up a new vehicle and they have an Android phone, I always try my best to, like, we can set it up just fine, but it's sometimes hard for me to find stuff on yeah. the Android Auto app. But. Yeah, I always use Google Maps on, yeah. do you use Google Maps? I or only use, use, so, although I have an Apple phone, I do not like Apple Maps. I, I have something against it. I only use Google Maps. Yeah, that me too. I understand, but. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, so. Who's Bud Bunny? Do you mean Bugs Bunny? I don't know. Or maybe Bad Bunny? Luis? I don't know what you mean. Bad Bunny is a... I know who Bad Bunny is. Okay, I don't know that. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not 100. How long does a new car's PDI take? Um, oh, the average time you, you is You said you're not 100, but yeah. I heard that you just discovered what RBF is last week. So, <laughs> never mind. I did have to get that explained to me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Charlotte said, I need to be nice to people. I have RBF. I, I, what does that mean? She just said, smile more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bud Bunny is a Latin musician. Interesting. Do you mean Bad Bunny? I don't no, know. he's saying Bud Bunny. Okay, okay. Um, what is the MSRP? So the MSRP of the LX all-wheel drive is $27,195, and that's Canadian. If you're looking at the front-wheel drive, it's $25,195. So again, $2,000 difference. Okay. Um, Rusting got... bunny face. <laughs> Love it. Um, got a comment about Google Maps. Uh, yeah, Moeb said it's uh, the way to go. Yeah. Wrath of Big V loves their, uh, loves that, their cell that toast. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if that was English or not. Any word on Sportage PHEV 2024? Any improvements on waiting times for these models? In Canada, there's definitely not improvements on PHEV. It has been a struggle. We've done so EV, Nero, we're getting at a very good cadence and there'll be uh, product available um, to buy. Like we have some product on ground now um, that, that isn't sold, uh, but plug-in hybrid has just been a real struggle. So Although we have one right here. We have here. one right here, but <laughs> they ordered it some time ago. How long does the new PDR, PDI take? I think I answered that, right? Mm -hmm. It's on average, it's 2.1 hours, but that includes cleaning and stripping the vehicle. Um, will you release the new Kia Carens? And the answer is no. So that is a vehicle that is not in Canada, for, for Kia at least. Isn't that the Carnival though? I don't know exactly yeah, what it is. Van. All I know is that it's not here. It, <laughs> it's, it, it's a van, isn't it? I'm not sure. We'll have to look that up. 
resting bunny face. I still think that's funny. <laughs> Do you guys sell vehicles to people in other provinces since it's so hard to find any here in BC? I missed that. I was reading someone's comment. Do Say we sell again. cars to people in other provinces? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. <laughs> New yeah. vehicles? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can sell anywhere in Canada. We just can't go outside of Canada. Um, is Kia not given the budget to revamp and renovate their dealerships? Some are really looking old and some don't even have the new logo. I've seen all the Hyundai dealerships renovated recently. So we have both Hyundai and Kia dealerships. And what happened was Kia brought out a new image program called Red Cube. And uh, I jokingly said that I would be the last one to, to be finished. Um, and it was probably good that we delayed because about a year after a bunch of stores changed uh, to the, the new red image, uh, they came out with the new logo and now we're, our colors are white and black. And so all those guys had to redo their stores and they did get some assistance on that. So when a, a manufacturer comes out with an image program, typically they give about five years for all the dealerships to renovate. Uh, right now we're scheduled for 2025 and bluntly that's because they can't produce the signs fast enough. It's like the cars. Yeah. <laughs> so to get all the panels and signs that we need um, for the new image, it, it's going to be two years. So what does that mean for the channel when we're under renovation? Well, this area should be totally protected, so nice. it should be fine. I'll we, still have a job, guys. Don't we, worry. We built this <laughs> knowing what the new image criteria was going to be. That's right. So. Um, let's see. Quick question. What's the SOS button near my rear view mirror? Does it work even if I don't have internet connection? Yes. So the SOS button will put you on the line with emergency services. It'll also engage automatically if your vehicle is detected to be in a collision. Uh, Mohab is asking, how long are the waits on an EV6 these days? Currently I have a three-year lease on another car. I'm just wondering how early to put in an order if I'm hoping to switch in the EV6 at the end of my lease. Uh, so it's definitely been improving. We're into like April orders now. Um, April of last year. So it's probably taking kind of 14, 15 months right now. And I, and I think it's going to be faster. It dials 911 or it dials Blue Link. I, I think it dials Blue I responded Link. with 911. Does it? Yeah. Do you know for sure? Yeah. Okay. I saw videos about um, someone being in a collision. I think it was at a Kia Carnival and it puts you online with emergency services. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Um, John asked, when will the 2024 K5 hit the Canadian market? It won't. They are not continuing the K5. It is done in North America. Are, are we getting it for 2024? Is that, that going to be the last year? Hmm. Stay tuned. Next video. I'm going to have to come back to that. <laughs> um, like they're, they're stopping production this year. I can't remember what month. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't think it's, I don't think there's a 2024. Aye, aye, aye. Just like there's, there's not a 2024 20, Rio, there's not a 2024 20, K5. No stinger either. Uh, no stinger either. Yeah. Um, Adele said, I also have three buttons just at the bottom of my rearview mirror. One bar, two bar, and three bars. What's that for? So that's going to be used for Home Link, which is a garage door opening service. Stephen Winter's cutting down a 65 foot tree. Holy smokes. Dang. You John think N, what, that's I saw dedication. Them. He still found time to join our live to let us know. John N says that he saw them listed in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I'll check my specs, but it, 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 the, the car is ending this year. It, it may, they may have a short run on 24, but I, I don't think so. Um, Spencer also asked, when do you expect the new 2023 Nero PHEV to hit your dealership? So we've actually already received one. Um, we've received two or three actually already. And I believe we are getting a 2024 shortly as well. So very, very soon. Okay, it looks like the team is correcting me because they're saying that they've got 24 K5s. And yeah, I could be wrong. Yeah, I remember- I, I, I know that, that production is ending in- 2024. Like in, it's ending in- In 2023. Like it's ending this year. Yeah. Oh boy. I haven't even gotten to get one as a demo yet. I've barely had one in stock. <laughs> I joke. Um, let's see. Oh, they're talking about cutting down trees. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. We're at the 30 minute mark, Pat. So we should probably end off today's live video. There's a, yeah, <laughs> if you guys, we'll give you like two minutes if, if, uh, if you've got any more questions to ask. Um, is there gonna be a replacement for the K5? So we're gonna have some 
uh, electrified cars that I believe will be replacements. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm expecting. I'm not expecting a gasoline one though. But Kia is still going to produce uh, small cars. We're one of the brands that um, have them, whereas you know the domestics have kind of gone away from small cars. But that's where we started, and so Kia is going to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, Adele says this is his first time having a high-tech car and he's discovering something new every day. It's quite delightful. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much again for watching. If you like us, please hit the like button. It helps the algorithms on our channel. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you the day after that. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>